What is up guys, welcome back to another Arena of Valor video and today we have another highly requested game um, ever since I did the reviews of the last AWC of um, Aviros Murad people told me to review Hans Richter as well because he is very famous for that hero and um, for this game specifically I got a lot of requests uh, telling me that they, he, he displays his skill on Richter very well here and I think even Darkbreaker posted on his community tab that in this game he played um, uh, very well, I think he was using the word God even, so we should be in for a treat guys and um, yeah of course if you look at Evo's jungle position we have Vero again playing on his um, very famous Murad so we will see if Evos is able to defeat IGP, of course, a very, very strong team. And um, yeah, so for the rest of the lineups, we of course have um, Liliana on fall in the mid lane. We have Krizix on Evos team as well. Very interesting that he wasn't banned. He's usually 90% banned this tournament so far. Um, of course, probably strongest support pick right now. Just such an incredibly strong hero. Already mentioned this in a lot of videos. And then lastly, we have a uh, Kilgroff in the other side lane. And um, you can see Krizix already ganking that Florentino on IGP's side lane, Dark Slayer position. They have a Thane as a support, super tanky pick, Hayate as an ADC, and a uh, Krikneck as a jungler, and a Krixi in the mid lane. And um, you can see the Krikneck was already applying a lot of pressure to Evo's lineup there. Um, they were f having a little bit of a fight for the Sentinel, but of course Krikneck able to get it, already continues with his red buff, Vero on the other side already continuing to his wrap up as well, and now we have um, on the screen Hans just clearing out the Vision Bird, um, he is laning against the Hayate, now if you guys didn't know, uh, Richter is really strong into ADCs in general because he can just flicker onto them and one shot them. So we should be able to see some very aggressive gameplay by Hans here. And you can see Vero already onto the dragon, secures it very easy peasy with his ult, with punish. Um, some little shurikens by Hayate won't be able to steal that. And now we have, you can see Hayate is bot lane, he's gonna get poked out by Vero here if you check the minimap. But they are showing um, Florentino invading the blue buff. Now if IGP gets this, they get the blue buff, um, very unfortunate for the Murad, as you guys know Murad really needs the blue buff, he just needs that lower cooldown on his S1, on his ultimate and of course he also runs out of mana if he doesn't have the blue buff, so um, definitely a bad start for Evo so far, already 800 gold behind, but Hans goes in really deep, is able to save the tower, now he was, he poked two people, three people even, four people even, to like half HP. So, um, and he, they forced the Krixi um, flicker afterwards, very well played by Poka there. And as I was saying, he was just trying to clear that wave, defend the tower. Um, a flicker, not sure if that was worth to use, but he was able to defend the tower. It only lost like 30% health and the enemies um, lost a lot of their momentum because they got poked down to half HP. Um, you can see in a lot of these tournaments, you can see you might think the side laner is just feeding, but it, it, it really is sometimes worth to give up your life to defend the tower, to clear the minion wave. Because, um, yeah, he forces the um, Arctic Orb enchantment by the Krixie as well, so very well played. Now the Krixie doesn't have Flicker and no Arctic Orb available. So she is really, really, um, she's really low as well, so she definitely has to go back here. Krizix can, uh, does not have the flicker available, but if Vero pops out of a bush with his ultimate, she will die. So she should be very careful. She also didn't bring the shield enchantment, of course, very standard to go uh, Devil's Awakening on Krixie nowadays. But just adding onto the squishiness, of course. As I was saying, um, again, <laughs> while I try to talk about stuff, team fights break out. So, as I was saying, a lot of, um, these slayer laners or like side laners in general just ult in like a malloc just ulting on top of a minion wave suiciding or an omen just running in to clear the wave is he able to steal that beautiful steal by hans there is able to pick up the dragon with his s1 there um 
Not really sure why Hayate and Thane were just doing Dragon by themselves. Um, Thane definitely should have tried to ult it to execute it, but wasn't able to. Vero unfortunately dies on his Muran, was able to juke a little bit back to the Crixie, but um, just four people around him, not much they can do. Poka dies as well, expanding the flash again as well. Is Again, Liliana, it seems like she's inting, but she's just trying to clear this wave, because if she doesn't clear the wave, guys, not only does do they lose the tower, they unfortunately missed it, but Hans was able to get a solo kill, uh, 1v2 against the Thane and the Hayate. Um, on his Richter, <laughs> very well played, but unfortunately we didn't see it. Also, I really wanted to get a um, first-person view of Hans this game, but um, as I always say, they only show one player per side. This game they were showing V-Raw, we already reviewed V-Raw, and um, this game he, as you can see so far, he wasn't, um, he wasn't like the star of the team, uh, so that's why we are just watching this. Um, top view because we want to see Richter in action because you will see later on in the game he is definitely the star of this game um, as I was saying that he dies to a gank by the Krikna um, now they will probably be able to get this tower bot lane yes now I think we have some breathing room as I was saying not only do you lose the tower you also lose the minion wave likely like you lose some minions and that is already like 250 gold and your death is 250 gold as well so you know it's really not that bad to um, trade your death for 250 gold for you and the tower uh, and saving the tower of course so just keep that in mind Mm. That being said, the enemy team is doing rep buff again. However, this time Hans, uh, I mean Sl uh, Dragon, excuse me, Hans probably won't be able to steal it unless he gets there in time. He is there in time. They are not showing him again. Uh, he is zoning them off by himself. Um, very well played. Yeah, the Hayate and the Thane seem to like to just do the red, uh, the Dragon without the Krikknack. I guess they're like, okay, maybe they won't notice because the Krikknack is top why would we be doing dragon right and um if they do it a second time they're probably like okay now he really won't expect us to do it another time after it failed once but again they tried they weren't able to hans unfortunately dies off camera again um while vero was trying to get a dragon not able to do it um Kilgroff is just happily clearing out his top lane um, another wave is coming he's probably going to do that little minion there on the mini map you can see it and then gonna go back to the lane. Mm, there he is. Now Vero will probably be able to get his blue buff. He's very happy about that. Of course, lost one earlier into the game. As I said, it just hurts Murat so much. Now you can see already a pretty interesting build. It's not too too interesting, but it is very aggressive um, with the boot choice by Hans on his Richter and full AD. Um, a lot of people go full AD Richter now. Again, of course, he is going to be really squishy in um, as a side effect of that. And you can see just how squishy he is. He gets dove just like that. Thane is not going to die, gets saved by his own passive. Huge heal there whenever he drops low. Um, very well played by IGP so far. This seems like a stomp, but of course, guys, as you guys know, I would never show a stomp. It is just too boring to show stomps. So um, get in for a neat little comeback here um, without spoiling too much. Um, of course, a comeback doesn't mean the team wins, so you still don't know who wins this game. But um, yeah. Anyway, you can see Hans here getting pressured by the enemies. Um, Liliana just gonna clear out that mid wave along with the Murad. Um, Crixie and Thane going back, half HP on both of them. Crixie just decides to go into the jungle. Oh, she just decided to go back a little bit further. Okay, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she cancelled her backport again. Um, she has the Magic Pierce boots. The Liliana going without the orb, so she will be a little bit more squishy, but dealing a little bit more damage in um, as a return. 
and here you can see they're just waiting for the blue. The Thane has a very aggressive positioning. The Krik Tank is already starting the blue. The Hayate just uses the ult to poke down the Kilgrof. Kilgrof able to dodge most of the S1 of Hayate, so does not end up dying. And Hans is behind the enemies very aggressively. Enemies are really low, they have to be careful. The Richter has Flicker available, guys, and you know, Richter can S1 Flicker, extending the S1, and then just... It, it, it hits you instantly, basically, and it does so much damage with the ult. Um, so, we will see. IGP is able to get a Slayer. Not much um, Evos can do here. Beautiful. I mean, I already saw it, so I'm not really too surprised, but I'll show it again. I already skimmed through this game to see uh, some of the Richter plays. But as you can see here, he waits in the bush for his S1 knockup. S1's flickers onto the enemies, is able to kill two, very nearly kills the Crixie as well. That was one more tick of the ultimate remaining to kill her, not able to unfortunately. Um, at least gets two kills in return, shaves off uh, Slayer of two of the enemies, so uh, definitely very well played there by the Richter. Um, Kilgrove has to retreat again. Kilgrove really cannot do much this game against Hayati. He just gets poked, you know. Against Krixi, he just gets poked. Kilgrove is really like a full melee in the face hero. And if you have a Krixi running away, if you have a Hayati dashing away, slowing you, um, poking you down while he's walking away with his S1, you will just take too much damage and you won't be able to do much. So that is why we see him struggling here for sure. Also, of course, he was laning against the Richter, eh, I mean, against the Florentino. Florentino, of course, a crazy broken hero right now. Oftentimes banned. But you can see, if it is just the 1v1, oof, seems like Hans is able to get another kill. It gets, it goes on to Krizix, um, but they are able to get a return kill. However, AGP notices that two of them are top, so they instantly push down the bottom tower. But Vero goes in, Places the S2, is able to poke them low. Um, again, Kilgraf, it just gets poked down by the ranged heroes, gets killed instantly. Crixi did too much damage there. Not much he can do. Florentino going very deep, but again, you can see Hans is just comes at the back of the team fight, kills the Crixi. Is he gonna be able to get more or is he gonna die here? No, does not end up dying to the Thane, all the dashes out. And the Liliana is able to clean up the Thane. Now you can see this Kriknag is a little bit aggressive. Yep, has to ult out of the team fight. Um, 6k gold lead for IGP so far. Definitely in a very commanding lead still, even after this small little comeback. You will see if Evos is able to get more. And you can see um, uh, Richter went for the Muramasa third item. Now I believe. He's probably building that because Hayate built a Frost Cape. Um, Florentino has a Hercules. Kriknag has the armor boots. And Thane, of course, is always tanky. So um, it seems worth. Not entirely sure, though. Not an expert of Richter itemization. Really haven't played him in months. Um, they are able to get some return kills there. Trading two for one so far. So this is. Definitely a win in Evo's book. Um, 5k gold lead. They were many. They they were able to shave it down. Even 4.5k gold lead. Are they gonna get this Slayer? I think they are. Is this gonna be a full comeback? If they get this Slayer, this is gonna be another 1 2k gold. So they are almost gonna be even. And at that point, you can already see Richter while behind. He was already dismantling the backline of uh, the IGP roster. So. This seems like a very promising comeback. Now you can see it is still a 5k gold lead. Because um, you can see on the blue team side there's still a lot of minion waves not cleared. Like there's a double minion wave bot that's like 300-400 gold there. They seem to get this dragon but it is still the small one. The big one of course spawning in 15 seconds. However red team is all positioned top lane. But Evos has to respond to this, otherwise they will lose the top lane towers. But they are also trying to stay because they don't know where the enemies are, right? 
Ooh, seems like Poka might get caught. Nope, very lucky. He, um, well, not very lucky, but he knows that they might be in that bush, so he doesn't enter there and they retreat. Florentino gets poked by Vero. Kilgrove got poked as well, but he can just lifesteal back up, as you can see. Vero gets the red buff. He's not able to poke them with the ult. They cast the dragon bot lane. The, the Florentino is going back. This seems like a dragon pickup by Evos. If they are able to. Do they know that Florentino is back though? Probably not. The Kricknack instantly uses his ult to rotate over to the blue buff and top lane to split push. So they have to respond to that. I believe a Liliana is enough to clear that wave. Even if the Kricknack stays and tries to kill her. She can just dodge his ult with her ultimate. And they are beginning the dragon. Very well played here. They definitely are in a position to take this. And if they get this beautiful pickup, if they are able to get the... Mm, Thane is getting the revival buff. They were not able to get it. They get collapsed. They get caught in a team fight. The, the Kricknag is just too fast. He was top lane, but he just ults to the dragon and is so fast with his ultimate. Not much they can do. Vero trying to get his stacks if he is able to. No, nope. not able to get all four stacks. If he was able to, he probably would have almost killed the Florentino. Also, keep in mind, a lot of Murads go Devil's Awakening, I think. But he goes Holy Thunder. I think that's better as well. But I, I am a huge noob on Murad. But, so don't take my word, but take his word, you know. Vero's word is worth a lot on this hero. So uh, yeah, probably Holy Thunder, I would say, is the best as well. I know a lot of European Murads go uh, for the for the enchantment Hans is using on Richter. I, I don't know the name, but um, I tried it. It's pretty good. But I feel like Holy Thunder is a little bit better. But again, I'm a huge noob. I have like 50 games on Murad, which is not nearly enough to being good at it. So anyway. You can see here Florentino is going crazy, doing his usual OP stuff, jumping around, uh, poking people with his sword. And you can see Hans is in wait. They do not know he's here. Is he going to be able to... He just absolutely not able to get the Hayate, unfortunately. But Hayate is so low, he might as well be dead because he's not able to join this teamfight anymore. The Florentino just keeps healing too much. Hans is able to kill him though. Beautiful! <laughs> Look at this little cheeky Thane! He dashes into a wall, but... <laughs> he dashes into the wall right here. <laughs> Misclicks, but then he is able to redeem himself with a beautiful ult into Flicker. Moving the ult to onto Hunts, killing him. And uh, four people dead. Very, very close. If Hayati died, if the um, Richter died there... Yeah, if the Richter died earlier, I mean, it would have looked very different. Almost was a clean comeback. Not quite able to do it, but very well played by both teams. Really good rotations. Kricknack rotating very well in the late game there. Um, let me see those damage numbers. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. We have 7-6 on, I, I think Richter had a lot of damage dealt, most likely. Oof, they, they just, we have the trick though. We have not the trick. Yeah, we do have the trick. If you press the comma or the dot on YouTube, uh, on your keyboard, you can skip a couple frames. So we are able to show the split second um, damage numbers here. Vero. Of course, stellar performance and not really stellar performance. He didn't do that well, or it seemed like he wasn't doing that well stat wise, but still 28% damage speaks for itself. 100% kill participation, Hans Richter, 24% damage dealt, very well played. On the other side, Crixi did a lot, of course, that game. Kricknack, um, Florentino, Florentino probably got 20% of his damage in the late game when he was dashing around in those team fights, doing all kinds of crazy things. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this heavily requested Hans Richter gameplay or uh, tournament gameplay. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, boys. Bye bye.